We're in chapter 14, the cardiovascular system. In this unit, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about this organ, the heart. Uh, this is the organ start to beat when you are 21 days old. And it keep beating 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. You never get tired. I really hope this will never get tired. And it works till the day you die. So far, we could not find any organ works, uh, any machine work as efficient as this and as long as this organ. So pretty amazing organ. When we talk about the cardiovascular system, I want you to think the cardiovascular system like this. Pumps and pipes. And the pumps represent your heart. These pipes represent your blood vessel. And the liquid flow inside is your blood. And you say, well, I only have one heart. One pu why pumps, plural? And the reason is your heart, your left side and right side, even though they stay together, they work together, they work synchronously. They are actually two separated pumps. The blood stay on the left side is oxygenated blood and it never directly go to the right side so it's a pump connect with another pump in this sequence if you're able to think your cardiovascular system like this a lot of things make sense for example you increase the workload of the pump well eventually you're gonna fail so a lot of things you can do to increase the workload of the pump like you block the pipes right if you like to eat bacon for breakfast uh, the double cheeseburger for lunch and in the dinner you eat t-bone or put two cauliflowers for decoration uh, decoration only and all the fat can accumulate those blood vessels and you can imagine those pumps they're gonna work very hard to send the liquid go through those pipes and when it blocks well your tissue die and there's this cardiovascular disease and if you are able to dilate these pipes, well, the pumps are going to have an easier job to do to send the blood go through those pipes. And this vessel dilator's function. So vessel dilator is a, is a hypertension medicine. And also you can directly work on the pumps. Increase or decrease is contractility. Increase, decrease is, uh, is contraction rate. And in the sympathetic nervous system, we talk about the beta-1 receptor, and it will directly work on the pumps. And if you are able to think your cardiovascular system like this, the, so a lot of uh, treatment of hypertension, cardiovascular system make, make sense. So I, I use this as an analogy of the cardiovascular system. Let's look at the heart. So your heart, you have four chambers, two atrium, two ventricles. And on the right side, you found this blue. Blue represent the oxygenated blood. And the red one is oxygenated blood. So let's look at the right side. The oxygenated blood come from your body. After they deliver oxygen to your tissue, they become the oxygenated and will go through the vein system and eventually become the vena cava. Vena cava are the biggest vein. You actually have two, superior and inferior vena cava. They collect the, body, the blood from the upper body, the lower body, go to the right atrium. From the right atrium, you're going to go to a door called tricuspid valve, also called the right atrioventricular valve. And these valves are designed uh, to open in one direction. They're like parachute uh, with a stream connect to the papillary muscle, the string called caudate tendine. If you, if you take anatomy, you learn those terms. It's like a parachute, so it's very easy to open in this direction, almost impossible to flip back. It makes sure the blood go in one direction. So from the atrium, you're going to go to the ventricle. From the right ventricle, you're going to go through the pulmonary semilunar valve, and you're going to go to the pulmonary trunk, diverge to the pulmonary artery, you're going to go to the lung to carry oxygen. And you find it's still blue. It's blue because it's, it's deoxygenated blood. So uh, it's not, not all arteries 
are red because well the definition of the artery and the vein in next chapter when we talk about the blood pressure regulation uh, the artery well they're artery because they send the blood out of the heart and they they are so close to the heart they need to increase their smooth muscle layer and that's why they're artery so artery are not always red some students like to use the red color to to remember that's the artery the vein uh, that's the blue in the peripheral tissue, that's correct. But in the heart, uh, you only have 50% chance to get it correct. So this, this blue guy, it connects to the right ventricle. These are the pulmonary artery. And the reason is it carries the oxygenated blood to the, to the lung to carry oxygen. And after they carry the oxygen, those blood become oxygenated blood. And the textbook like to use the red color to represent it. So you're going to go through the pulmonary vein. So you found these are the pulmonary veins. So again, these are the veins, but they're red because they carry oxygenated blood. You're going to go to the left side, left atrium. And through the left atrium, you're going to go through the big valve called bicuspid valve, also called the left atrioventricular valve, also called the mitral valve. Here's three names. And you're going to go through this valve to the left ventricle. Left ventricle is the biggest pump because it's ready to send blood to your whole body and come back. Uh, when we look at the, the muscle layer, you found the left ventricle have a huge cardiac muscle compared with the right ventricle. And the reason is your right pump is a small pump. It only needs to send blood to your lung and come back. Your left pump needs to send blood to your brain, to your toe. Uh, it has a thicker muscle layer. So this is the bigger pump. And from the left ventricle, it goes to the aortic valve. Aortic valve being been blocked uh, by the pulmonary trunk. It's here. And through this valve, go to aorta. And from the aorta, going to have three branches. Brachiocephalic trunk, left uh, carotid artery, left subclavian artery. You learn them in anatomy. We won't emphasize this too much in this class. These are anatomy. And through this, become descending aorta, going to go to your uh, abdominal cavity, and going to go to your whole body. So you found the blood stay on the right side. They always stay on the right side, or well, in theory. And because they are the oxygenated blood. And the blood stay on the left side. They always stay on the left side. They are oxygenated blood. So you, you even though you only have one heart, it's actually two pumps. Pumps connect with pipes, connect with pumps. And they work, they work together. They, every second, actually less than one second, they work. And they work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Pretty, pretty amazing organ. Now let's look at the heart muscle, cardiac muscle. This cardiac muscle, they, I call them advanced muscle. They have the advantage of skeletal muscle, which is uh, can produce a big power. They can produce a big muscle muscle power, physical force, and they don't have the shortcoming of the cardiac muscle. Uh, the cardiac muscle can uh, sorry, they don't have the shortcoming of skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle can have muscle cramp. You don't want your heart to have muscle cramp uh, because you you're gonna rest forever. <laughs> So the cardiac muscle, I call it advanced muscle. And when we talk about the molecular uh, mechanism to trigger muscle contraction, we'll explain why your heart muscle won't have muscle cramp. So heart attack is not muscle cramp. Heart attack is you, you block the blood vessel. And the downstream of the heart muscle won't get oxygen and they die. So the heart muscle are like neurons. They, they use a lot of ATP. They need a lot of oxygen flow. And let's look at the force, how they are able to pass the force from one heart muscle to the second to the third. So all the cardiac muscles, they connected together through this. It's called the intercollected disc. And you, uh, when you learn anatomy, you learned, okay, on the intercollected disc, the muscle feels together uh, in, in the junction. You have three different kinds of junctions. In the, you learn them in the epithelium tissue. Epithelium tissue are like the skin. And this junction, they glue the cells together. So when I pinch your skin, I won't be able to take a piece of skin off because they glue together. And in those junctions, there are three different kinds of junction, the tight junction, the desmosome, and the, the gap junction. 
And in the, the first identified in epithelium tissue, then gradually they've been found in other kind of tissue like the cardiac, uh, the, the heart. So in the heart, in the intercollected disc, you found two, the desmosome. The desmosome is like a big pin that pin the muscle together. And because of the desmosome, so the heart muscle all glue together. When first muscle contract, the physical force can pass through the desmosome to the second one to the third one. So all the muscle work uh, together. The force can pass from one to the second. And the gap junction, you find the gap junction. Gap junction are like the iron channel. They, they provide a connection between cell and cell. They also glue the cell together, but they are not like the small pin. Their main function is not the physical force, it's the communication. And they're like iron channel, they just remain open. So when the first muscle produce uh, generate action potential, electrical trigger mechanical, produce action potential, those ions are able to go through the gap junction, goes from the first muscle to the second muscle to the third muscle. So all the cardiac muscles, they work together, they fire together, and then they contract together. This is how the heart muscle can work like one cell uh, together. Because in the inter intercollected disc, they have the desmosome to pass the physical force from the first muscle to the second muscle. They have the gap junction to pass those electrical signals from the first muscle to the second to the third. This table shows you your four chambers. So your heart has four chambers, two atria and two ventricle. And you also need to know the big pumps connect with each chamber. So know the chamber's name, know, know the blood vessel connect with it. Like the right atrium, you have vena cava. And if you took anatomy, you know, okay, vena, vena cava, actually you have two. You have superior vena cava, inferior vena cava. Uh, in physiology, we focus more on the concepts. So you don't have to tell me, okay, you actually have four, uh, two vena cava and four pulmonary veins. Uh, as long as you know the chamber and know the, the, uh, the pipe connect with the chamber, that will be good enough. So it's, it's okay you assume the vena cava is one. Uh, one it it connects the, uh, the oxygenated blood from your body and go to the right atria. Then you're going to go to the right ventricle. From the right, right ventricle, you're going to go to the, uh, the pulmonary, pulmonary artery. From the pulmonary artery, you're going to, going to send the blood to the lung. And your, your left atrium is going to receive blood from the pulmonary vein, those oxygenated blood. You actually have four, but it's okay to call them just pulmonary vein and send the blood to the left atrium. So you need to know the left side is oxygenated blood. And from the left atrium, gonna go through the, uh, the bicuspid valve, go to the left ventricle. And because the pressure in the left side is much harder, I told you the left ventricle is the, is the pump number one, is the biggest pump. You need to send blood to the whole body. And the pressure is high, so the valve, uh, there's higher chance to be damaged. You, you may hear some people, they have to go to uh, fix their mitral valve, fix their uh, left AV valve. Uh, because it worked for 50, 60 years, the valve, uh, there will be some leakage. And when there's a leakage, that's not good because now the blood is gonna flow back. So you want to make sure all the valves, uh, make sure the blood go in one direction. From the atrium to the ventricle, from the ventricle to the biggest artery. Uh, you, you heard more people damage the left valve, left AV valve, the mitral valve, because the pressure there is higher. Uh, some people damage the right AV valve, usually it's, it's due to the congenital disease. Okay, and that's the pi pipes connect with the pump. So left ventricle is going to connect with aorta, the biggest pipe. So know the each chamber, know how the blood flow, know the, the, the valves between them, and know the big pipe connect with them. Okay, let's take a short break.